Need some fast, cheap, reliable muck coins? Go to MMOXP.com and use discount code MONEYSHOT for 5% off your order. Link in the description below. Welcome back, YouTubers and Mad fans. This is Mad Money Shot. Sniffing up the Mad Cheese has always got a mud video today. Uh, the rookie premieres for Madden 21 available. I haven't even looked at what they are yet. I'm going to do all this live in this video. Uh, but every year when this comes out, I'd like to make a video about who I think you guys should pick, who are the good rookie premieres, who I think will have good uh, rookie seasons. Because obviously the way rookie premieres go is when they uh, when they perform well in the NFL, their ratings go up as the year goes on. So let's, go, let's take a look at some of these rookies. Before I do that, though, I just want to let you guys know if you need some coins to finish these rookie premier cards these rookie premier sets before madden 21 comes out my sponsor uh, mmoxp.com is running an extra promotion right now so i usually get five percent off when you use my name but you can get an extra ten percent off right now they're running an extra promotion so check them out link in the description below so getting right into this uh and looking at these guys we have the number one uh pick joe burrow obviously that makes the most sense the ea really likes to uh to, to pump up its stars or at least its, its star rookie players. Typically, the number one pick is always going to have somebody here. Uh, but ultimately, uh, this is a pretty interesting pick to me. I mean, Joe Burrow, uh, if you want a quarterback, I mean, he's probably going to play right away. Andy Dalton's not there anymore. Uh, I don't know what type of year he's going to have. They have pretty good weapons in Cincinnati, so I don't think his issue is going to be uh, weaponry. Um, he could easily get rookie of the year. Quarterbacks have an inside track for rookie of the year, whether they deserve it or not. And if you get a rookie of the year out of Joe Burrow, you're going to get a, a – this year I had Kyler Murray. I got a 96 overall quarterback when it was all said and done. I could have swore last year you got a 99 overall for the rookie of the year because I had that too. I think it was Saquon Barkley. and Maybe it was two years ago, but I had Saquon Barkley and uh, Marshawn Lattimore in the same draft, and they both got like rookies of the year, and I, I had like 99 overall cards. So you could easily get that free. This is one of the safer picks. But I don't expect him to, to constantly just be a consistent leader of your team. I just don't see that. I think you're always going to be looking for a quarterback. So this guy here would probably be riding the bench. At running back, we have a player who's in a really good position, Clyde Edwards Hilaire. I'm not even sure how to say his name. Uh, he was the last pick of the first round by the Chiefs. Uh, pretty versatile guy. I really like the position that he's in. I mean, when you're in the Chiefs offense, any player in the Chiefs offense has an opportunity to go off. And have a really big year. I don't know if we'll get the opportunities. To, they, they do a running back by committee there. And the running back that they had last year did a pretty good job. The running backs that they had overall in that team did a pretty good job. They plugged and played them as they felt they needed to. Uh, I would imagine with a talent like this that Andy Reid would, would try to put as much on his plate as possible. But when it comes to rookie running backs, and especially rookie players in general, Andy Reid a lot of times has shown hesitance um, to really thrust the guy into a role. He could have probably gave McCall Hardman more work last year than he did. He still had a pretty decent season. But there's just a sense that player, that teams, especially teams that are trying to win Super Bowls, don't necessarily want to rely on rookie players that haven't picked up the full playbook and stuff like that. So I can really see uh, Clyde here um, not having a great year, having a good year, but he's not going to have the type of year, I don't think anyway, where he's going to be uh, leading your, your your backfield once again. I think he's just like Joe Burrow. I think if you do pick this guy, he's just going to be a weapon on your team, not necessarily going to be enough to be your bell cow. But I really don't expect him to come in, and it's a passing team anyway, I don't expect him to come in and have a monster rookie year. So to me, he's probably not worth it. Now the receiver spot, this was, I really saw this coming. I made a video not too long ago guessing who I thought the rookie premieres were going to be because like I said, every year they put one at every position. They have quarterback, running back, wide receiver, tight end. You can see where it's coming up next. And I had CeeDee Lamb pegged as probably the most that made the most sense. Even though he wasn't the first player, they could have went with uh, the receiver that went to the Raiders. He was probably the fastest guy in the entire draft. He would have been a cheat code. I think he's a guy, I mean, he, it's, to me that's a miss. They probably should have had him because to me that's a guy probably everybody would have went for uh, but CD Lamb might be more talented he might be a more talented player I go I'm gonna tell you right now I don't even need to finish this I always endorse um, you know if you're gonna do something like this receivers always make the most sense when it comes to like rookie premieres like having this card grow throughout the year number one the Cowboys offense is gonna be pretty good this year if he's playing in the slot with the receiving core that they have he's never gonna get double teamed uh, they, they have really good receivers already. They had 2,000 yard receivers last year in Amari Cooper and Michael Gallup. If those guys are playing outside, they're going to be getting most of the defense's attention, which means CeeDee Lamb's going to really do work. So I expect him to have, I don't know if he'll have a rookie of the year caliber year, 
but I expect, I mean, you need three receivers anyway, so I really expect CeeDee Lamb to always be in your rotation. You, you can always find a way to have him as like your third receiver uh, as long as he performs well enough that he's having a good season. He, I think you'll get the most use out of him based off of the fact that you need three wide receivers. These other positions, these running back, you probably only need one. Quarterback, you probably only need one. But receiver, you need three at least. So this makes a lot of sense to me. This is one of my favorites to go get CeeDee Lamb. I think he'll have a monster year. So next up, we got tight end Cole Komet. Now, this is a guy, he was a second-round pick. Majority of these guys here are all first-round picks. Um, they need a tight end in Chicago. He'll probably start, if I had to guess. Uh, he was definitely the best tight end in the draft, but I don't think it was a great tight end draft. He didn't have, I mean, he ran a 4 7 40. So this isn't like a guy, like if you typically want to like target guys that, you know, even if they're not good, they're like super fast or, you know, some physical attribute that's going to make them still perform when it comes to Madden because a lot of times height and speed are really all that matters. Cole Komet doesn't necessarily have uh, that combination that I want in my starting tight end. Now, it's a pretty sad year for rookie premieres when you're looking at offensive linemen like that might be a smart pick. Tristan Wirfs might have been the best uh, tackle in the draft. Um, he slid a little bit. The, the Bucks were very lucky to get him. I've seen, I saw him mocked much higher. But ultimately, going to the Buccaneers, which is probably one of the highest profile teams in Madden 21 going forward, based off of the fact that they got Tom Brady and uh, an offense that's going to be elite, uh, I think Tristan Wurst would probably be a good pickup. He's probably going to get, as long as he's not letting Tom Brady get sacked every five seconds, and, and Tom Brady's too smart and too good, uh, and, and their coach is too smart and too good to let that happen. They're going to, if he's if they're struggling at the edges because their offensive line isn't great, they're going to scheme ways to get the ball out of Tom Brady's hands fast. Um, so that's going to make the offensive line look even better. So I could really see Tristan Wharf's card move up pretty quickly based off of the fact that, like I said, it's a high-profile team and you have a, a very smart quarterback and coach. Now, Derek Brown was the first defensive tackle taken. He was the seventh pick by the Panthers, and I do really like his situation. I think there's some pretty good talent around him on the defensive front of the Panthers. So it's like I don't expect this guy to come in and have to deal with constant double teams. So I like this player, but I don't really like him uh, as, as – I mean, if you can only do one or two of these – I don't really think he's going to be one of the, one of the guys that I would pick. Uh, like the next guy that I'm going to talk about, Chase Young is probably my number one pick. I mean, he was the best player in the draft, no doubt. Um, he's going into, once again, great situation. Great situation in, in Washington. Washington's one of my sleeper squads within the next couple of years. And it's mostly because of their front seven. Their front seven is ridiculous. This guy is probably, he might come in and be one of the best pass rushers in the entire league. But he's going to a team where you can't necessarily double team him or focus on him, like because they have so many great defensive linemen already. I mean, they have Ron or uh, Deron Payne, who's a first round pick. They have Jared Allen, who's a first first round pick a couple years ago. Uh, Matt Ioannidis doesn't even get any any. You know, people don't even talk about him. He's also really talented. Uh, they have edge rushers for days. Last year's first round pick, uh, Montez Sweat. Uh, was a first round pick. He's an edge rusher opposite Chase Young. And I think he had like eight sacks this last year. So you have all five of those guys already. That doesn't even include Ryan Kerrigan, who's quietly, in my opinion, having a Hall of Fame career. He's got like 80 something plus sacks in his career. I mean, he's going to close in on 100 sacks easy. So you can't focus on Chase Young. Most teams are not going to be able to handle all that. Their offensive line is not going to be able to handle all that. And I think Chase Young is going to eat. So if you ask me if there's one guy on this defense, especially, I think of the whole thing. He's probably the guy I'm going to do right now. If you want to know the truth about it, Chase Young is the dude. I'm gonna go ahead. I'm, I'm just gonna break this out and just add this to the set because this is my guy right here. Like Chase Young is such an animal. It's without question. I'm taking him with the with the free set that I have, and boom, he's mine. Uh, moving on next, we got Patrick Queen. There was a couple of really good linebackers that was taken. Uh, Patrick Queen's a nice one though. I mean, there's no doubt about it. He's one of the best linebackers in the draft, and once again, he's going to a great situation. I mean, Baltimore knows how to draft defensive players. It wouldn't surprise me if he doesn't turn out to be a great player. But linebackers typically they come in and they have uh, you know, monstrous impacts first year. Now, moving on to the next player, we have the number one cornerback in the draft, um, number three pick. I mean, this is a guy, I know I, I jumped the gun and I went ahead and I dropped it right on Chase Young, but Jeff Okuda is probably my second favorite player on this list. And I didn't even know it was on here because like I said, I waited to look at this at the same time as you guys. So Okuda is a guy that, um, once again, just like receivers, just like I was saying with CeeDee Lamb, 
um, you need three cornerbacks. You know what I mean? Sometimes even more. Certain defenses have four cornerbacks on the field. Or, or you know, this is somebody you're always going to get use out of. And I would imagine he has a good enough year because he's a very talented player that he continues to rise and is always an option for you. Like I said, I don't regret taking Chase Young over him because Chase Young is the best one without a doubt. But Jeff Okuda would probably be my second favorite. And I'll probably try to get him done. And then last but not least, we got Xavier McKinney. Here's a guy, um, you know, I, he probably moves right into a starting role in New York. And uh, I think he'll be a good player, but... Uh, nothing really about Xavier McKinney that wows me enough that I'm going to take him over these other guys. So by the time Madden 21 comes out, I'm probably going to have Chase Young, Patrick Queen, and Jeff Okuda. Because to me, defense is way more important anyway. I can make offense with anybody as long as they're fast or, you know, if it's a quarterback, they have good throwing power. I mean, that's really all you really need to make offense because it's a little bit easier. But on defense, you need actual players. So by the time that comes out, I'm going to have these three players. I guarantee that. So I'm going to go ahead and end the video there. If you guys want to see more Madden 21 based videos, uh, let me know in the comment section of the like button. I'll do that. Other than that, thanks for watching, man. My shit out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my bids and more. Link in the description below.